Right, uh, good afternoon ladies and gentlemen. What we're going to do is we're going to look at the power surges at switch on from this uh, AC unit here. This uh, is a very cheap, very nasty, Chinese built, standalone uh, uh, air conditioning unit. It's 9000 BTUs per hour, it's about 3.5 kilowatts. has this hose that goes out of the window and a big uh, intake vent here to the uh, condenser. As a result, the condenser is cooled with your extremely expensive pre-cooled air and a huge amount of hot air gets sucked in through the necessarily open window. Um, total disaster area, but um, it was cheap. It was about uh, 140 quid and it sort of keeps the room cool, um, but uh, certainly a far from great piece of engineering. Anyway, it's got a motor in it and motors take big current surges and for comparison I've got this uh, Hoover here, Dyson, well, I don't know what model it is, DC11 I think, and that's got a sort of 1400 watt motor in it. So let's switch the machines on and have a look at what the current surges are like and then we'll take a look at the waveforms later. So here we go, turn it on and off it goes. Reasonably quiet machine, you can just feel it there, it takes about a minute or so for the uh, refrigerant to get round and the cool air to come out. But as you can see, it's drawing about 700 odd watts. And actually, as the pressure builds up within the uh, circulation, the, 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 the energy consumption will go up. What's interesting, though, is that there's quite a lot of flicker. The load changes quite frequently from time to time, and uh, that, that's all related to presumably to some gearing on the compressor the different stages in the compressed cycle result in uh, fluctuating torque on the motor. Uh, and when it's been left running for about 10 minutes, it'll gradually get up to about 800 watts, 850 watts. I don't know whether it's working correctly or not. The machine says 1100 watts on the nameplate, um, which I'll see if I can show you now. There, 1100 watts. It's never. It's anywhere near that. Anyway, quite enough of that. It's not actually very warm today. Okay, so there was the uh, AC surge current of around about 20 amps or so. Now let's have a look at the vacuum cleaner. Here we go. So, very noisy, I'll leave it off so I don't bother the neighbours. And what we'll do now is we'll go have a quick look at and review those waveforms. Okay, as promised, I said we're going to look, look at some current waveforms. Well, just before we do that, we'll just look at these curves. So at the top we've got current, and at the bottom we've got power. So this was recorded during that uh, little video clip. And this is the switch on of the AC unit with a peak current consumption of around 20 amps. And here for the vacuum cleaner, peak current of around 33 amps. And as you can see, after the switch on surge, the current stabilizes at sort of operating values of around 3.5 amps for the AC unit and about 6.5 amps for the vacuum cleaner. Corresponding power curves here, big spike when we turn on the AC unit, it actually goes way off scale and then drops down to the operating load. Interesting that you've got this sort of bouncing around a little bit, little bouncing here, little dip here, and it's presu that's presumably all related to the refrigerant working its way around the circuit. This here is the vacuum cleaner, and apart from this uh, big, big spike, the current is fairly flat, but of course I only ran it for a few seconds so as not to annoy the neighbours. Um, I'll quickly explain what all these four different curves are. So the white is the most important one. The white is the actual power, the amount of actual work being done. So in this case, we measure it in watts. In this case, the, this is about 1400, shows that the vacuum cleaner is using about 1400 watts. The light blue one here is the apparent power. Uh, this is essentially the average volts times the average amps, uh, and it's a measure of how hard the grid is working, how much load is on your wiring, etc. <coughs> and we can then break down the various components that make up that apparent power. 
This is the one that most people are familiar with. This is what's called reactive power. This is the amount of current, essentially, that is being drawn by uh, energy storing devices, things like inductors, things like capacitors. So the magnetic field in an electric motor will store energy and will periodically draw it from the grid and then give it back. It takes current, the grid has to work to deliver the energy and then put, take it away again, but actually no useful energy is being converted. So this is reactive power, positive for inductance, negative for capacitance. And red here is distortion power. When a current waveform is different in shape to the voltage waveform, not all of that current does useful work. Some of it um, just gets wasted effectively. And this is a measure really of how distorted the, the current waveform is and how efficiently the, uh, the current is being converted into energy, or ha rather how efficiently energy is being transported on that current. Okay, so let's actually take a look at the waveforms now. So we'll start with the vacuum cleaner. Voltage waveform at the top, 100 volts per division. You see the voltage peaking out here at about 330 volts. Um, here's the current waveform. It's 16 amps per division. And here's the instant of vacuum cleaner switch on. And as you can see, there's a rapid rise in current on the first half cycle, and it peaks out at about 64 amps. And the next half cycle, it's a bit lower and lower still on the next cycle. And by the time we've got to the fourth cycle, the peak current has dropped down to about 32 amps. And of course, over the next second or two, the current will drop down to the operating current, which is a lot lower than that. Um, as you can see, there is actually a big voltage dip here. 330 volts odd down to under 300, probably about 299, 300 volts on that cycle where there's 64 amps being drawn. And of course, as the current goes down, you can see the voltage going back up again. So it's probably around 25, probably just under 210 volts there. 310 volts peak, sorry. Um, similar sort of thing with the AC, but interestingly, a different shape of waveform. In this case, the instant of switch on is slightly later, slightly lower voltage. So the, pe the first peak isn't as big, but the next peaks um, are quite high, about 35 amps. Um, not quite as high because the, the AC motor isn't as, isn't as powerful as the vacuum cleaner motor, but the waveform is, is quite different. Uh, and I assume that's due to the different type of motor design. In this case, the AC uses a, a single phase induction motor, whereas the uh, vacuum cleaner is a brushed universal motor. Okay, what happens then to these waveforms once the machine's stabilized. So let's look at the AC once it's reached stabilized level. Voltage waveform as before, current waveform. This is a much, much bigger scale, as you can see, 1.6 amps per division instead of 16 amps per division. Um, but you can see that the waveform is very distorted. It's got this sort of lumpy appearance to it, and presumably that's related to um, not just the uh, fact that it's an AC induction motor, but there's probably some power factor correction capacitors in there as well. And power factor correction capacitors will draw a very, very distorted current if there is any distortion whatsoever in this voltage waveform. This should be a perfect sine wave. As you can see, these peaks are a bit flattened, and that will cause considerable distortion of the current waveform if there is a capacitor present. So I suspect that's the reason for it. But what's really interesting is this trace. This is the power trace, and uh, I've put two traces on here. One of these, the light green, is the instantaneous power, and this is simply instantaneous voltage times instantaneous current. Oh, actually, sorry, I pointed that in the wrong way. Instantaneous voltage times instantaneous current gives instantaneous power. And I've then smoothed out the power curve a little bit um, just to uh, remove the uh, fluctuations. But what's interesting is actually, if you look at one half cycle compared to the next, compared to the next, there's quite a lot of difference. So the, the, the power consumption is uneven. And not just that, the unevenness comes and goes, and you can watch this uh, in real time uh, when it's running. Here you see there's no difference really in power consumption between one half cycle and the next. 
whereas there is here. And I, I, I'm struggling to explain this. I assume it's because the motor is geared to the compressor, so that perhaps a reduction of 6 or 10 to 1, and that the compressor exerts um, an uneven torque on the motor, probably uh, you know, related to uh, the phase in the compression cycle, and it gives this uneven current due to an uneven load on the motor. Okay, so now let's look at the vacuum cleaner once it's stabilized. Um, actually, let's just go back and I'll show you what the startup looked like. Again, this rather peaky waveform where with sort of plateaus when the voltage drops down to near zero. Um, here it is, again, smaller scale, 3.2 amps per division. Uh, and you can see this, this peaky waveform is maintained. But what's interesting is look at the power waveform. It's absolutely symmetrical, absolutely stable. And here's the smoothed curve, and it's absolutely ruler flat, illustrating that the motor is under a stable load. Uh, in this case, the vacuum cleaner was just idling, so that's not entirely surprising. But it just really goes to show how the uh, uneven load of the AC compressor translates into an uneven current and uneven power consumption. Now, I mentioned that uh, with regard to the AC waveform, this distortion, that some of this might be due to the power factor correction capacitor uh, being uh, affected by voltage distortions. But why then is the voltage distorted uh, as it is here? What's causing this flattening of the peaks? And the answer is anything that draws a distorted current waveform like the vacuum cleaner. So as you can see, the, the, the current rises much faster than the voltage, so it makes sense that the voltage here will dip under the uh, resistance um, more than it dips here. And in fact, it will dip out of proportion, leading to a distortion of the voltage waveform. And in fact, we can actually see this on this numerical analysis here. Um, we'll, we'll look at the red trace, because that's the one of interest. And this measures the third harmonic distortion. This measures the amount of 150 hertz current, or voltage in this case. This is the voltage waveform we're looking at. The amount of 150 hertz voltage present. And it hovers around at about 1.2%. So in other words, of this 230 volt AC, about 2.5 volts is at 150 hertz distortion and when we turn the vacuum cleaner on that jumps up a little bit it jumps up to about 1.5 percent and that's simply a reflection of the fact that the vacuum cleaner is pulling the tops of the voltage waveform down further and that is respect reflected in this higher distortion value um, simply a reflection of that and of course any device that distorts the current waveform will distort the voltage waveform so all these other distortions here, this 1.2% this of, of third harmonic, this 7th harmonic, 5th harmonic, ninth harmonic, and so on, will are all come from various appliances in the neighbourhood that are drawing uneven, or sorry, distorted current waveforms. Things like motors, things like fluorescent light bulbs, electronic devices, and so on. And they all contribute to give this net distortion. Um, this isn't really a problem in domestic areas, but in industrial areas where you, they're using heavy industrial machinery, which takes very high currents, and where certain types of device like variable frequency drives take extremely distorted current waveforms, theoretically you can get into a situation where the voltage is so distorted that actually you may find that equipment doesn't work correctly. But uh, that's uh, perhaps a discussion for another video. I hope you enjoyed that and I hope you found it interesting. Uh, have a nice day.